Hey guys, it's Evan and today is October 24th, 2024 and this video is about individual setups for those baby BCC uh, boas that I had. I'm going to show you this little rack setup that I have for them. But the first thing I wanted to do, because I wanted to show you guys a little bit more about my life, is we are near peak on fall foliage color here. Look at this. Absolutely God's country right now. Look at this. So I just wanted to show you something. I'm pretty fortunate. The whole part of this state is like this right now. Pretty cool. But anyways, let's go inside. I also have a dying phone battery, so hopefully I make it through on this. But um, I'm going to show you my baby center. And these are Reptile Basics VE6 racks. Uh, the nice thing about VE6 racks is that they're pretty affordable and accessible. Um, but the other thing why, about them is they are versatile. So if you come in here, you will see um, I have a center in here. Um, and these VCX racks will hold multiple different size tubs. They'll hold this large tub. They'll hold these one across. They'll hold three of these small tubs across. And then they'll hold these medium tubs. And for full-size boas, I really think these medium tubs are where you should be starting with. Um, I don't have quite enough of those, so I'm going to be putting a few of these boas into the full-size tubs. But the nice thing about these is you can kind of expand out. So, like, if you start with 15, and then as you sell a few, and as they grow, you can move them into bigger racks and things. These racks, these little ones right here, they'd work, and especially if you had quite a few of them, um, they, they wouldn't be a bad idea to start them off on that. But the other thing about them, I think they're a little small, um... Primarily for it's kind of a pain in the butt to find water bottles and things that fit, uh, water bowls and things that will fit in them. But I don't love those. Um, they might be good for certain things or if you really need this space, but I don't tend to use these. So I just tell you that um, these medium ones is what, what I'd be buying if you're getting a VE6 rack for baby boas. And then you can expand them out into these bigger ones. But the other thing I'll tell you is this rack is most well suited for these medium sized racks. So if you're going to do one thing, uh, just one tub, I go with these. Like, this is equivalent to a shoebox rack. Um, is what I'd say. They're a little bit, the le shelves are a little short for these big tubs. And I think that these little, are a little bit too narrow across and their proportions are a little too narrow and too deep. So I think it's hard to get like a really good airflow in them. Um, and they just don't, I don't love them as much. So this is really where it's at, but this is a versatile rack. Other than that, I set my heat tape at 87. When you're, you got BCC boas, especially when they're babies, you don't really want to be going too crazy with the temperatures. I don't think 90 degrees um, is, you should not be setting them at the standard 90 degrees is which when I started keeping reptiles 90 was a standard But so beyond that I'm just going to show you an individual that I have separated out really simple water bowl coconut um, This coconut is pretty wet because I just rehydrated it um, But notice that even though it's dripping at the front Even though it's dripping at the front this these walls are dry. So this is okay um, If you guys are curious about why I don't why I, why it's dripping at the front but not on the other sides go back and look at my things uh my information about relative humidity and whatnot but so beyond that this is what i have them set up in to start with once this coconut dries out or if i want to bump the humidity as my um, ambient humidity gets uh drier in the winter um, i might put a handful of damp sphagnum moss in here but right now this is kind of how i'm set up and it's really what they need it's got right in their pocket for the temperatures the humidity will be nice and high they have a nice clean water bowl it's easy to manage when you have 15 of them it's just really easy and efficient to stay on top of all those essential parameters and the other thing is when i start feeding trials here the nice thing is that it's easy for me to make a nice non-startling presentation i'm going to open up the snake's going to be right there and i can present to them i think that a lot of well-meaning people set up very elaborate cages for baby boas and that's fine and good and a lot of people can do really well with them i'm not saying it's wrong but then um it creates these scenarios where it's almost hard, too hard to get them to feed because it's so big it's hard to make them encounter the feeder or you have to move a bunch of stuff and you startle the animal before you can even present the prey so that's just the one thing i'd tell you about the simplicity of this that's nice and the last thing i'll tell you is this is just a little tip on how to keep track of feedings on a whole bunch of snakes either on a litter or if you i also do this for my normal collection this is a template for an attend a class attendance roster like a school attendance roster um, i just went on and made this one on canva off of a template and changed it a little bit but imagine like a teacher taking roll call so students names down here the dates right here and they check it off so that's essentially what i do here is i have numbers 1 through 15 on this litter uh, first time I attempt to feed, I'll put the date up here. I will write small mouse, which is probably what I will start trying to feed all of these. 
and then if they accept them, I will circle them. If they don't accept them, I won't circle them. So then it makes an easy grid for me to just look at, and I'm like, oh, this one has no circles, and I really need to up my game here or maybe try something else. But that's just how I tell you to do is a good way to keep track of feedings on a bunch of snakes, either a litter is to create an attendance roster like this, um, or I even do this with my collection. I have the names of all my snakes down here, and then I'll just write, you know, small mouse, medium rat, medium rat, small rat, small chick, medium chick, rabbit, and I can go through quickly and count up my total before I pull my uh, pull my things, and then I write the date up here, and then it becomes a log of when I fed those animals. So that's just pretty easy way to do that. So that's my tips. And then this weekend, when I get some good sunlight in here, I'll go through and make an, uh, a video that's individual shots of each animal. I'll pull tubs, and I'll show each one to you. So if you guys are curious, these will be for sale. A lot of them will be for sale. Um, they are not for sale on YouTube because it's against the policies. What, they, what I will do is I will continue to announce and show animals here and talk about what's happening and what's available and then I will create a Flickr photo album that has all the animals you can look on them there'll be all the information from there and you can contact me through there so eventually in time that will happen but we are far away from that we probably got about two months to get these established and then at least to the point where I'm confident that they're ripping feeding and good enough feeding response for you guys and then I need to get them sexed out and the other truth is I live in Maine and so um, the shipping window is going to close before these guys are established so if you are uh, non-local to me, you are going to have to wait until spring for delivery. But all that will come in time. Here's another one. And I'm really excited that you guys are going on the journey with me. So take care. This is just what's happening on this day, which is of 12 days after I had a true red tail litter. So it's probably something you'd be doing when you have it too. Take care. Bye-bye.